All right. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, before I address the last week's game or the, the upcoming game, I want to make one announcement. Uh, we all are aware of Josh Boutwell, the, the fight he's facing currently. Um, through Trojans Together, um, which is the NIL collective uh, deal that is around here locally, um, there's a campaign to raise money um, and then some of our, our players will be helping with that campaign to help offset some of Josh's medical expenses. Um, a lot of respect for Josh. I think he might be on this call today. I'm not sure if he is or isn't. I, Adam told me he thought he was. I can't see him. But, um, but really a lot of respect for Josh. Very consistent in covering our program. Um, and uh, love him, grateful for him, and just want to you know, make sure um, we do everything we can on our end to help uh, any way we can. And so um, feel free to, if you want to help out with that, please push that publicly. I'd love for us to be able to do um, a lot of good there in helping him. You can go to trojanstogether.com and uh, get involved if you want to help Josh. So I um, want to announce that first and foremost. Uh, wrapping up. The last game, homecoming win, good crowd at home, great alumni, fan turnout, student section band, cheerleaders, all were fantastic. Um, good, good to get the win at home uh, on homecoming. Um, announcing our players of the week, offensive player of the week, um, not real complicated here. 28 carries, 245 yards, three touchdowns, Kamani Vidal. Um, defensive player of the week, um, five tackles, two sacks, uh, two and a half for loss. Javon Solomon, Special Teams Player of the Week. Uh, Scott Taylor Renfro, good on all his kicks, three for three on field goal, four and four extra point. Um, job Takers of the Week, Defensive Job Taker of the Week, Jack Chinshu from St. Pius X in Atlanta. Offensive Job Taker of the Week, Jordan Lovett from Statesboro, Georgia. Um, and then Special Teams Job Taker of the Week, uh, got a legacy here in DeWitt Betterson Jr. Um, the Nathan Harris, John Johnson, Service Award winner of the week. Philip Lee, um, the Corey McCullers Spirit Award goes to Robert Marsh. That's his second time receiving that award. Um, Corey's parents saw them at the Trojan Walk on Saturday. Always good to see them here. And then the Workout Warrior of the Week um, that's doing a little bit of extra with Coach Witt is Kyler Gibson. Uh, really proud. Kyler's done a great job on scout team. And – such a good job that he was kicking our um, defense's tail the last couple of weeks. Like Richard Jubinor, Philip Lee, Javon Solomon, all those guys were getting a handful every day with Kyler's effort at practice. So middle of last week, I told the offensive staff, I want to see him roll with a second O line. And the next thing you know, he gets in the game, late in the game for a handful of snaps. And he plays really good football. And He's really developing. I'm super proud of his development and him just staying the course and think he's on the right track. Um, wrapping the whole game up, the good, 587 yards of offense, 351 rushing, seven yards per carry, 236 passing, 19.7 per completion, 11.2 per attempt. Those are really good offensive numbers. The Probably the most important second week in a row was zero sacks um, and – allowed four TFLs, which is not outrageous. We want to clean that up even better, but uh, for two weeks in a row, zero sacks is a big deal. Things to clean up offensively. We know we, we scored on all our red zone drives. We had to settle for two field goals. We needed to score touchdowns. We get opportunities in the red zone. Ball security, we had the one fumble uh, in, in not a red zone possession, but it was a long catch that was about to be inside the 10 that we fumbled that would have helped us go up 14 to nothing. That was disappointing. And then I thought alignment detail and route detail offensively on the perimeter needs to still get better and cleaned up. And then our combo blocks just on offensive line, handling some twists better and then working up to the second level a little faster on some run-throughs. Defensively, the positive, 203 yards allowed, 47 yards rushing allowed, 1.5 per carry, 156 yards passing allowed. Um, they were 5 of 20 on third and fourth down tries. Five sacks, nine tackles for loss. Those are really positive things. Thought we were really poor on one double move. We still missed 12 tackles in the game, which I'm not pleased with that. 
And probably the most frustrating part of the entire game for me was when we put our young guys in on defense. Um, I just – I thought we did some good things. Um, at the very end, we got two sacks late. Eric Shaw got a sack and uh, Julian um, Pittman got a sack. But I was very disappointed with some contested plays down the field where I didn't think we competed like we want our guys to compete. And um, – really shouldn't even have gotten to where they had a chance to kick a field goal to end the shutout. And if we just make a play on the ball a couple times. And so was frustrated with that. Um, special teams, like I mentioned, 100% on our extra point field goal opportunities. Um, do have one protection thing we got to clean up. I didn't like in there that I saw on tape. And then our punt team was solid. We had one procedure penalty, but punted the ball solid most of the day. Punt return, I thought we – you know, the, we had the holding that called the punt return touchdown back. Um, uh, that was unfortunate. We'll get that cleaned up. Uh, and then our kickoff coverage uh, team had two that I thought were really sloppy and poorly covered that we need to get cleaned up or we're going to get exposed there. So was extremely disappointed in the kickoff coverage team a couple of times. Um, looking ahead, have a big challenge this week. Army's really good. Um, they're 37 and an eight at home since 2016. Uh, that's like 80 something percent, I think. And then um, they've averaged eight or nine wins a year basically since 2016. They present challenges with what they do schematically. They're very similar to us defensively. Um, offensively, we know they've you know they've evolved a little bit, but they're still a very run heavy um, option centered offense, just more out of the gun. I think early in the year you could see them trying to learn maybe the flow of the system, and they've they've hit their stride a little bit more. The quarterback's a really good physical runner. they got good skill people. Um, a couple other offensive linemen I think are as good as anybody we've played so far. Um, like, like I mentioned, defensively they're, they're built from a schematic standpoint, very similar to us, <clears throat> and um, they're very sound. Nate Woody is their defensive coordinator. He was at App for a long time. Uh, a lot of respect for him. They do a nice job defensively. Um, they don't beat themselves. They make you beat them, and they, they're really clean with how they play the game and very well coached in all three phases. Tough, tough task this week going on the road. Um, we got to get our guys ready to play a really physical four-quarter football game because that's how it's going to be played. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Hey, John, it's Jamal at uh, WCPA in Montgomery. I know Troy takes kind of like this pride in, in playing the military schools, Army and Navy. And now you've got Army back-to-back -back years. How cool of an experience do you think it's going to be just to get up to West Point uh, and play those guys this week? Yeah, I have a lot of respect for, you know, people of service in our country. And I think the academies, um, man, there, there are so many great things about what they stand for. Um I think our university here, Troy, does a great job with having affiliation and attachment to the, the service community. And so um, that starts at the top at our university with Dr. Jack Hawkins. And so, um, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for our guys to, to show respect to, to people of service. Um, at the end of the day, when you go kick off the game, it's still a game. And they're, they're college students that maybe go to a little bit different style of college than our guys do. But, um, but yeah, really, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for us to educate our guys, too, on just some things. We ha we're blessed, too, with Rusty Witt, our head strength coach. You know, he's a Green Beret in the, in the Army. So um, he'll address our team today on just some things about the military, um, just so that our guys have an appreciation for, for what that's all about. But um, historic venue, historic program, you know, um, so something that's neat for our for our program to to go do. Hey John, it's John Dawson. Um, kind of a strange question, but I was curious about the weather, so I googled it, and so it's supposed to be like low fifties, maybe rain, seventy percent rain. How often do y'all practice with a, a wet ball during the week and prepare for stuff like that? That's an outstanding question. It's not a weird question at all, man. Um, I look at the weather probably like 20 times a day. You could ask our coaching staff. I'm an untrained meteorologist, all right? So I've got like seven different weather apps. Um, good news is here on Wednesday, we've got a pretty high percentage chance of rain. 
and I can't wait to practice in it because that's what it looks like it's going to be on Saturday. So we will all week. I, I've, I've known since Saturday night I looked up the weather at West Point after our game was over to go ahead and start kind of looking for what the conditions might be like. And um, today when we go out and do our run through on Monday, um, all the special teams periods, I'll be running around with a water bottle, making sure the, the you know, the snaps and the holds and all those things have to be um, worked through with a, with a wet ball. Um, probably won't do that on offense today because I think Wednesday we're going to be fortunate enough to get some rain, which I'm pretty fired up about to, to help us prepare. Um, but it is an issue, ball handling, ball security, those sort of things. Um, but hopefully we do get it, what, what the forecast says on Wednesday and we get some rain with no lightning so we can get out in the rain and, and um, get that ball um, where we have to be aware of the, the conditions. Coach Nick Brooks down in Dothan. Um, last year, I remember against the Army, you mentioned uh, just leaky yards from um, this game. You mentioned the missed tackles the past two weeks. How important is that to get that fixed going into this game this week? Yeah, it's vital. If we don't get it fixed, we'll be sitting here talking about a loss in a week. Um, they, they, the thing I'm most impressed with the, the style of play from Army is they fall forward. They run hard behind their pads. They're very physical. Um, they're ball carriers. Every guy that touches the football on their team runs the ball with physicality. And I think that's you've seen that improve as this season has gone on, in particular with their quarterback. I think you saw I saw a big jump in their quarterback between week one to week three, and really the last three weeks he's looked. You know, when they played Texas San Antonio, which is a big road win for them. They played at Syracuse, and then they played Boston College. Their quarterbacks run the ball with real physicality. I mean, um, it, it's it's. I'm not saying he's Tim Tebow, but it's like Tebow-ish the way he's running the ball. Like, I don't know what his timed forty is, but he but he's a load. He's 215, 220 pound guy, and he he's physical. And um, if we do not wrap up, gang tackle, populate the football, we're gonna have. Um, real issues. So we've got to do a good job of getting hats to the ball and um, gang tackling. Hey, it's Craig. Um, we talked a lot about Kamani and the, you know, a lot of it is based on his health, the way he's playing, but how much better has he gotten as a year? It seems like he's been really consistent. Yeah, you know, Craig, I think sometimes at running back, it, it you have to get into the flow. More, you have to find your rhythm a little bit. Um, Two, I, th I think Kamani is, and I've said this to I'm blue in the face, Kamani's a great talent. He's a better person. He's very detailed in everything he does. It's helped him that our O-line's playing better, too. You know, our, I thought our O-line the first couple weeks um, were, was not playing up to a winning standard the last couple weeks we have. And um, so I think the O-line's gelling better together, um, and that's helping him. You know, I think a lot of times if you get the back – to the line of scrimmage, then you find out how good is your back. You know, just don't give up free runners into the backfield. And we have found if we'll just make sure that Kamani gets back to the line, usually good things are happening. And um, we've given only we've only given up seven tackles for loss in the last two games, which has allowed him to get to the line of scrimmage and then go create. And um, he's got great vision. He's extremely powerful. I mean, he's one of the strongest guys pound for pound on our team. He's also got good speed, gets to top end really quickly. Got great short area quickness as well. On the Wildcat run he hit last week for the 60-plus yarder that went went to the house, you you saw his top end speed is good. And so I think he's a really quality back. I think he's as good as anybody in the country, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's approaching the school record for rushing yards. He's leading the nation. I mean, uh, doesn't get much better than that, I guess, does it? It does not. I like running the football, and um, he he makes us do it well. You know, it's about players, not plays. So I don't care what plays we draw up, as long as we get, make sure twenty eight gets his touches, we got a chance. Thanks. Thanks, Craig. Hey, Coach Josh. There you go. <laughs> First off, I just want to say thank you, and uh, I appreciate you guys. And uh, I've been kind of speeches ever since they told me you guys want to do this. I really appreciate it. Um, but, uh, Check out. First off, uh, health wise, how are you guys doing? I know uh, Catledge has still been out for a while, but health wise, overall, how are you guys doing? 
Yeah. Um, first, Josh, happy happy to support you, man. We love you and grateful for you. Um, health wise, today uh, is our doctor's day where um, Dr. Dugas and our our folks that take care of our guys medically see our guys. They're all the guys that needed attention. We're seeing this morning. Um, you know, a couple bruises. Um, don't know yet if it's gonna who it's Catledge is probably still out this week, but getting closer. Um, this week in the bye week will do him some good. Ethan Connor, same deal. This week um, and the bye week next week will maybe do him some good. Um, the two that got bumped that that you know Jarvis Williams had a little issue in the game, but he finished the game. We'll see what that looks like as this week goes. I don't really know yet. And then DeAndre Lewis had a little a little um, thing that maybe. Could have gone back in. We don't know, but we, we decided at that point in the game not putting back in. There was a couple other guys like that that I know were available this week, but we kind of held them at halftime. Um, but I think we're, you know, we're at that part of the year where everybody's missing guys, you know. Um, us, Army, everybody's got guys that are out for injury. And um, you, you love on the guys that are out. You encourage them. You help them get healthy. And then you get the next guy ready to play the best he can play. And um, we do have some spots where we're, we got some bumps and bruises we got to get over quick. So we asked this last year, but uh, what's the toughest aspect of defending Army's defense and also offenses are? And also, you guys having guys on the staff that have experience in Army, how much does that help you guys? Yeah, you know, get Coach Gass, our defense coordinator, was there. Um, he was the co DC there. Um, and um, that when Coach Woody first went there in 2020, so he's been around it. Um, Eric McDaniel, our D-line coach, was there as well. And then, like I mentioned earlier, Coach Witt, Rusty Witt, our head strength coach, um, his, was was there. And so they have familiarity maybe with how they do some things. Um, offensively, they have changed some. You know, had been under center, uh, three back option stuff. It's been more gun. Um, maybe a little bit more conventional formationally. They're still doing some of the same type of things. Um, we'll have to pr be prepared for some under center stuff. We'll work some under center stuff this week, even though they haven't shown it this year. It hasn't been who they are. Um, but it's it's it presents real challenges. The other thing you have to be prepared for is they go for it on fourth down more than anybody in college football. I mean, th thir third and three or third and five is really second and five to them. You know, and so a lot of the time, no matter where they are on the field. So, I mean, they'll go for it on fourth and one at the minus 20. They don't care. And so uh, we've got to be really good with how we play some of those situations, understanding sequencing within down and distances. It's always four down territory to them. Um, so that's a big challenge. And then uh, just making sure we play with good, clean vision and good eyes and good leverage on the football. And going back tackle, we got tackle. Hey, Coach, it's Lindsay from yeah. WAKA in Montgomery. Um, you guys able to come out on offense last week really strong out of the gate and put some points on the board. Army doesn't give up a lot of points in the first quarter. Um, how important is it for you all to kind of repeat that performance from last week? Yeah, that's a good question. Rosie, Rosie brought something up like that, and I actually misspoke when Rosie asked me the other day. I was accurate on our exact numbers, but in 20 games here, we've only scored two touchdowns on the first drive, and – um, they they were the first game this year, and then obviously last week against Ark State. Um, but I've had nine punts in 20 games on the first drive, six turnovers, three field goals, and two touchdowns. Um, starting fast matters. Um, when the games we have started fast, I've got a sheet right here in front of me that I'll, I keep note of every week. What what was the result of our first offensive drive? Um, when we score a touchdown for uh, to start the game. Those two games, we scored 48 points and 37 points. When we kick a field goal to start the game, we scored 28. We scored 45. You know, we scored a decent amount of points. We get points early. Um, Army does a great job of uh, making sure um, they keep the ball in front of them, not allowing explosive plays, and they do a good job of gang tackling and populating the ball and getting a lot of people through the football. And so um, they're really well coached on – in all three phases, but in particular, I think Nate Woody does a great job on defense. Um, 
but they 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 present challenges and they play really good clean defense and um, sometimes I feel like I'm watching us a little bit by how they play. Hey John, it's Jamal again. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this question. Adam keeps tweeting about how many times you guys lose the coin toss. Um, miraculously, you have not won the coin toss yet this year. Um, I mean, it's going, I guess, pretty well for y'all. I mean, you're, you're what, four and two now, but I mean, like, you, what do you need to do to, to get to win a coin toss? Are you just are you just guessing the wrong the wrong thing? Is, is heads is tails failing you? Is that what's happening? Well, last you know when we're at home, we don't call the f toss, so it's not our decision. But um, I, I they've they've kind of made a joke of this. It's been like the running joke of everybody around here. I could if if we lose the toss and win the game, I would love to lose the toss. All right, so um, if there's anything I want to be o for anything, I'm okay with it being the coin toss. Uh, but yeah, if it starts to have a direct outcome in the game, I'm gonna see if we can get a two-sided coin and make sure we win it. But until then, um, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of extra time, but it has been sort of a conversation piece around here, around the football building that we're not very good at winning the toss. If I'm gonna be bad at winning something, that's something I'll be okay with. And Jamal, it's five and, last and 15 in two years. So not just this year, last year took five and 15 in two years. Yeah, it's been the whole time we've been here, we stink at it. And then lastly, for me, just going back to the weather and, and Kamani, just finding that balance, especially during like when it's raining and stuff, how do you make sure you're not leaning maybe too heavily on the running game and, and, and making sure that Army still has to respect you guys being able to throw the ball? Yeah, you, you got to, you know, if, if all you do is run it, people are going to play heavy to the line of scrimmage. You're going to load the box. They're going to warm the box, as I say, like get more bodies in there. Um, last week, we – that kind of happened late in the game and the offensive staff, they asked, could they throw the ball one time? And I said, yeah, you can throw it now. And they threw it as an incompletion. I'm like, well, that wasn't very good. Like, let's run it. Like, so weather games, you, you have to be smart, you know, and calculated with chances you take. Um, sometimes the down the field throw is less risky and dangerous in this, in a weather game than an intermediate throw. Cause there's going to be more bodies around. If you throw the ball, in the middle of the field at eight to 10 yards, there's a lot of interference. If you throw the ball outside the hash 30 yards down the field, it's usually a one-on-one. -on -one. And so you got to still, you still got to take some shots to make them respect that you will. And, um, you know, it's good to have a good running back in a weather game because usually people lean on the run game, but um, you still have to make them, you know, play it straight up and play it honest. And, Weather sometimes the you know the rain can affect it, wind can affect it just as much if more so the the passing game you know and so we will practice with a wet ball a little bit today a lot on Wednesday hopefully um, and we'll practice some on Tuesday but we'll be able to do it naturally I think on Wednesday looking at the weather forecast um, it's a big part of it for sure.